Hey, what is up guys? This is Paul from Smart Easy DIY. Today I wanted to make a quick video and show you how I purged my radiant heat system. It's kind of not a lot of videos available on the topic and the place that I got it from didn't really have a video or anything like that. They kind of had some paper instructions and a lot of phone support. And then recently the guy's numbers disconnected so I just kind of had to wing it and figure it out on my own here. Really quick here, I'm gonna try to show you my thing's kind of up high, so I can't really show the whole thing. But what I wanted to show you here really quick is I just have a simple system here. I have an electric boiler, and I'm really curious. I haven't really gone through a winter with this now, so I want to see how this does. And I'll include a link in the video description below the video where I found this guy, if you want to check it out. And anyways, this is kind of a simple system here. It's built by Fred Seaton in Montana. Anyway, so what I, I want to go over really quick is how to, basically, how to purge this thing. And like I said, I'm trying not to make a long drawn out video here, but try to show you how I did it. Now you can see my hose is here. This is my mechanical room and I have a setup there with the sink and stuff. Okay, so I wanted to put antifreeze coolant in here in my system. I didn't want to just put straight water. So, because a lot of them are showing you how to just put water in straight. So, anyways, on my particular system here, it has this valve here and it has purge and drain. They actually are backwards. Uh, this one here should be drain and this should be purge. So what I have from my pump coming in, I have this line here because this is the direction that the water goes. It goes through the boiler, it goes this way over to the pump, and then goes up. You can see the arrow there. So I wanted to pump in the way that it goes with the pump and then come back out into the drain bucket with this one. Now if you follow my hoses down here, it's a little bit of a mess, but I'll show you here. I have this Ryobi pump, it's just one I happen to get, it's a transfer pump. And you're going to want a transfer pump, a good powerful one. Don't get one of those cheap ones that you put on your drill, because this is going to take a while. I'll include a link in the video description where you can find one of these guys. Maybe not one like this exactly, but one that should work for you if you're interested. And so you can see here on the pump you have inlet and outlet. So this is the outlet, the one that goes to the boiler system, up there, the white one. And then this is the inlet here, which goes into my bucket here. You can see the bucket with antifreeze here. And then this is just the return hose here in the same bucket. And so that's all you need is to go in the same bucket. And I just have this hung up here because it's a little ways from where I'm doing it. But so yeah, so very simple. This is the pumping out with the pump, going in here, going through there, and then uh, then coming back out with this one, back to the bucket. So I don't want to make this too lengthy or too confusing, but I want to show you how I did. And then in my particular instance, I have six loops. Um, the top two are both on zone five, so I have five zones but six loops, because zone five is a big one, it needs two loops. But Anyways, as you can see here on my thing, I have some extra ones. So these guys here are closed currently. You can see the difference, how much open this is compared to this. And then these guys here open and close the zone when it demands for heat. So yeah, what I did is I started with all these closed and all these on, all these zones. So I'd start with zone one, and then I would take this guy off. This way it opens this zone. Just unscrew it completely and let it hang. And then open this, unscrew it all the way because it used to be like this and now it's like this. And then when you're done with that, so you let that run for 15 minutes and you gotta make sure that it's got plenty of water in your bucket and you let it run for 15 minutes and that should get most all the air out. Most of the air comes out in the first couple minutes but they say to let it run for at least 15 to get it all out. So then what I did is um, as soon as you start your pump, you keep this closed and you turn this valve this way I don't want to do it right now because my other pump's running now because I just did this. So you want to do this. If you have a system like this, that way it sends water down there and not up there. So, so I would start to pump really quick and open these guys really quick, turn this, and then do that on zone one. And then when I'm done with zone one, then I close these guys really quick, shut the pump off, and then I closed zone one, put this back on, then I opened zone two, and I kept zone one closed, that way the air doesn't go through all that again. So then they opened zone two, took this off, did the same thing, 15 minutes. So you do that for every single one of those, 15 minutes at a time, 
And like this where I have two on zone five, I did each of those individually as well. So I did 15 minutes each. Then when you're all done, and it's very important that you open and close those every time so you don't get any more air in the system than what you have to. And then, anyways, so the next thing I did is what they say is then to open all the zones and then let the pump run for a half an hour uh, in that same bucket down there that you're doing. Let that run for a half an hour. And so you do that for 30 minutes. Then when you're all done, that should pretty much have all the air out of the system. So the tricky thing then, you have to know for sure what PSI you're doing and your furnace might say it somewhere. This one here is 12 PSI and that's pretty typical from what I understand. And then, so what you wanna do is make sure to close this one while your pump's still running. Open this up, let a little bit more in there. This is while this valve is still turned like this. And you let a little more in there and you can see your pressure gauge go up. Then I put it up right around 12. And then sometimes it uh, needs a little bit more. And so what I did is I left this pump hooked up but I shut it off. And then I turned all my thermostats on to call for heat. That way this water pump kicks on. And then that's gonna circulate water for a couple days through there. And then make sure that your air vent, of course, is open at the top. And then any air that's in the system will escape, hopefully. So yeah, just leave this pump running. And then check your pressure. My pressure had dropped down to about 10 then. So I decided, so I unplugged this pump again here. And this pump here that I had left hooked up to the antifreeze water, I added just a little, it doesn't take much. So I added just a little, I kept this one closed and I opened this one and just added a little bit. It went up to about 15 pounds. I got a little too much. So then what I did is just very carefully open this a tiny bit and let it down to about where it is now. So it's just right above 12 pounds. So it's really close. And sometimes you might have to do that trial and error a couple times. And then yeah, like I said, leave that thing running and you should be all set. So. Hopefully that helps to kind of give you an idea. Your setup is probably different because I had looked at a lot of different setups and they were different than mine. But um, this was just to try to give me kind of an idea because a lot of them, like I said, I had a really hard time finding a video about doing the coolant and water instead of just straight from a hose or something like that to fill the system. So that's kind of how it worked for me to bleed all the air out of the system. And then, because you want to make sure to get all the air out as much as possible before you fire your boiler up. This boiler here, I just left it turned off for now, but it still can circle through there. And then, like I said, I'm gonna leave that pump there run for a couple days. And then what little air is in there should hopefully work right out of that cap there. All right guys, well I hope this video was helpful. And like I said, anything that I think might be helpful to you, I'll include a link in the video description below the video, anything that I think might be helpful. And uh, yeah. Sorry for the mess here, but just kind of right in the middle of it in my mechanical room and hope that's helpful. All right, let me know how you guys make out with your system. Thanks for watching, guys.